The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hello everyone. Today on Aging Horizons, we're going to be talking about APS or Adult Protective Services. And adult protection is exactly what it sounds like. It's a team of folks, uh, several teams in fact, many teams across the state, who help uh, vulnerable adults stay safe and living with dignity. We have such a great show with such good information. Today join us. 45 years, two packs a day. It's like $80,000. I thought I was just hurting myself until I fell asleep in a chair with a cigarette. The whole house went up. I lost it all. I knew smoking was expensive, but I never thought it would cost me everything. The human heart, even at its strongest, it's a fragile muscle. Chest and arm pain, shortness of breath, are signs of a heart under attack. But three numbers can save a life. Dial 911 at the first sign of a heart attack. Quick response from medical experts can save your life. I was 45 and it happened to me, a heart attack. Dialing 911 saved Ryan's life. Now he's here and he's healthy. This message sponsored by Mission Lifeline Montana. Every 65 seconds, someone is affected with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Many become isolated at a time when help is most needed. If you or someone you love is affected, help is available, both for people with memory loss and their caregivers. Memory loss can feel frightening, but you are not alone. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association Helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Hi folks, welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kimmy Everman, and as I said, we're going to be talking about adult protective services today. Might surprise you what is, what is entailed with adult protective services. Um, they're really there to help vulnerable folks um, stay safe and with dignity, if at all possible, in their own homes. And we have with us a real expert today, Michael Hagenlock. And Michael is the Bureau Chief of uh, Adult Protective Services in the Office on Aging. Hi, Michael. Hello there. Good to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah. And as our audience can see, we're Zooming. Uh, it's the age of Zooming, and so we're particularly thrilled that you could be with us, Michael, even though you're very far away. Um, so, but let's, let's start with the basics, because that always, I think that always helps me. What is APS? Yeah, well, thank you for that question. You know, Adult Protective Services is a social services program. Um, we're there to help folks out that are at risk for abuse, neglect, or exploitation. Um, as you can see, just like we're doing today, Adult Protective Services uh, through Zoom, uh, doing this, our workers are also capable of doing this kind of program. Oh, wow. And uh, so we're still out there working and Adult Protective Services is really there to help folks maintain their, their dignity, as you mentioned earlier, right. and to stay in their homes and, and get the services and the programs that are necessary for them to be safe and to live a happy, independent life. Sure. So can you explain a little bit, Michael, how is that, how does that process go? And we'll start with, let's say you get a call from someone. 
Sure, sure. You know, most of our calls come from many different folks within the community that have concerns for the individual uh, who may be at risk. And Adult Protective Services, we work with all adults that are 18 and older. Um, it could be 18 to 59 looking at some kind of disabilities or other things that have happened to them physically, mentally, or otherwise, or individuals who are over 60 and due to other complications that often some of us experience as we get older, Certainly. have left us at risk to uh, abuse, neglect, or exploitation. And so when we get that phone call, uh, the first thing that we do is we take a look at the information that we received from the caller and to analyze what are they trying to tell us what is the allegations if you will that they're making that this person may need help with or that somebody may be causing some kind of harm to that individual and once we get that information uh, our staff reviews it and we'll make a determination what next steps oftentimes what we'll do is call the uh, person who called it in and uh, try to really find out what they were trying to tell us or what they were asking for and uh, once we've talked with the person or the caller uh, then our staff will go out and talk to the individual if you will the uh, vulnerable adult or the adult that's at risk of abuse neglect or exploitation to really find out from their perspective what's going sure. on and possibly how we could help them right. um, from that point forward based on that information then we'll work into what we call an investigation into those events and try to determine whether in fact these things are happening and then in addition to what we can do to help that individual uh, so they can stay at home uh, continue their independence as much as possible oftentimes it's us getting them in connection with services within their community that they may not have known about or that could be very helpful uh, could be anything from meals on wheels to something with a physical therapist or a doctor medications transportation all kinds of different aspects that we look at right. and how we can help those persons that are at risk uh, get the services and help that they they need to have michael that just sounds wonderful um you know we talked off camera about uh, some of the really positive things that can happen uh, or come from having adult protective services sort of touch your life and you know you're not hauling anyone to jail you're not you're not taking their home you're not putting them in a you know you're not putting them somewhere you're simply coming to talk about what can we do to help you live a safer life would would you agree yeah, you know, with Adult Protective Service, this is one of the myths is that somehow we're coming in to take folks out of their homes right. and put them in a nursing home or something like that. We don't have that kind of power. Right. And, and nor do we want to exercise Exactly, that. nor do you want to do it. And, you know, we believe in autonomy. We believe that every adult out there has a right to live their life to the, the abilities and the wishes of their own. It's not for us to determine what's right or wrong in that area. We want to make sure that they're helped and they have the resources. And, you know, with Adult Protective Services, a lot of the things we do get involved in can be intrusive. Um, they're mm -hmm. very personal and that it can be very emotional. Mm -hmm. At the same time, our staff, it's amazing the work that they do with the folks out there and are able to. Uh, I mean, we've had so many success stories out there in getting folks where they uh, say at home they were struggling, uh, they couldn't get their medications, those kind of things. Right. And we help them get connection with the services in the community. And now they're, they're thriving and they're, they're staying at home. They may have a little home health services coming in or someone to help up set up their medications. Right. I mean, there's just so many different aspects. And even though we're a civil investigation unit, right. um, that's the other part of ours is what can we do to help individuals to help themselves and be protected and stay in their home? And exactly. uh, we have so many stories we could share. Well, Michael, and we're going to do that when we come back because we're almost out of time. Folks, we have a whole lot more to tell you about. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us.
I have so many questions about power of attorney. Well, some powers of attorney are for finances and others are for healthcare decisions. A power of attorney designates an agent who would make decisions on your behalf. While making a power of attorney, you have the ability to control your agent's power. You also have the ability to decide when that POA would take effect. Wait, am I giving away all my rights? Power of attorney isn't a license to make any decision for you, just those that you've specified. Your agent should be somebody that's working in your best interest, but it should also be somebody that you would trust. What if they try to abuse their power? Protective measures like third-party accounts secondary signatures, defined spending and gifting limits can help protect against financial exploitation. An agent's powers can always be limited by a customized power of attorney, and they can be revoked by you or the court if the power of attorney is abused. So carefully drafted estate planning documents can help ensure that your finances are monitored, but not abused. If you or someone you know is being exploited, please report to Aging Services Bureau at 844-277-9300 or the legal service developer at 1-800-332-2272. This message sponsored by the DPHHS Aging Service Bureau. I take care of my wife at home. When I found out training was available, I said, sign me up. It's made a huge difference. When my husband was injured at work, it was life altering. The class has taught me that it's okay to grieve, to ask for help, and to better cope as a caregiver. My dad lives four hours away, and the Powerful Tools class has taught me that it's okay to ask for help. I highly recommend them. To find out about this course for caregivers, go to PowerfulToolsForCaregivers.org. It's amazing the difference a little training can make. Questions about Medicare and other types of insurance? Contact the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office to get answers to questions like, what is the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? And how do you decide if you need Medicare supplemental insurance? This insurance counseling program is not a sales program. It is available to provide answers to your insurance questions. For more information, call the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office at 1-800-332-2272. Hi folks and welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here with Michael Hagenlock today and Michael is the Bureau Chief of the Adult Protective Services Unit in Senior and Long-Term Care. Um, and Michael, again, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, before we kind of move into the next sort of chunk of information that we want to talk about, could we just briefly touch on um, you know, one of the things that y'all do when you're, you're sort of assisting somebody is you might sort of help them plan for some things and, uh, into the future. And, and what does that kind of entail or what kind of programs are we talking about? Yeah, what, the, what you're referring to there is what we refer to as our service plan. And uh, when we get involved in a case, the thing that we're really focused on is the individual. We have our mantra, which is respect, integrity, and dignity. And any time that you're working with an individual, uh, we do not want to tell anybody what they need to do. Right. So we create what we call a service plan. And it's based on the identified needs of that individual. Um, it can be things such as housing, it can be mental health issues, it could be medical, it can be nutrition. The list is endless okay. of the things that we can connect with. Because we work with our state unit on aging, the area agency programs, and plus a whole plethora of other programs within their community. And so it's focused on what that individual needs help with and what they want. Um, it's what we call supportive decision making. Right. And it's to bring folks together that are important to them and are their social circle that is there to help them. And we just really are a catalyst to help bring those things together. So we put this service plan together that will help them going forward in their future right. on what they need. And that's very much person-centered planning, which is exactly what we would hope to see in any kind, but, and especially in a situation where um, people are frailer, perhaps, and feel like they don't have a voice. So that, as you said, that bringing everyone together is so important to support their voice and let them have a voice in, or, or you know, some at the table. Right. Yeah. It, you know, it's their life. It's that individual. Right. It's their living. And, you know, each one of us has a different belief structure, thing that we value. And right. it's not our job to try to tell folks what they should value or what they should or how they should live. Right. It's our job to listen to them and find out what's important to them and help meet their needs. Right. 
absolutely. So let's move on to the protections that we talk about with, with Adult Protective Services, Michael. Yeah, so when we start talking about protection, um, there's a lot of different aspects to, to protection of these individuals. And one of the jobs of our investigator is to sit down and talk with the individual and find out what would be in their best interest to help them. Um, we can be talking about anything from uh, financial situations. That's one of the big things right now is exploitation, the scams. And so part of the protection stuff is to try to figure out what services we could help with and or educate folks on what to do or not to do. You know, we've talked about this before in other episodes that we should never wait till there's a problem to uh, put together power of attorneys for medical, for financial. Um, we need to plan ahead for those things and help educate. We also like to uh, talk to the ind individuals and get as much information we can. We keep all of our records confidential. Sure. And it's important that we keep that, including the person who made the report. We don't divulge that information. Um, <laughs> and the uh, staff out there, our investigators, they'll work collaboratively, not only with the victim, if you will, in this case, and some of the family members, but we'll work with their financial institutions. We'll work with the healthcare provider, anybody and everybody around. And we also want to make sure that justice is served. So if somebody is causing them harm, um, we know these can be very emotional times and very difficult times, but that's where we wanna make sure that the person that's causing the harm is also held accountable. Right. And uh, we can put a buffer between there. And sometimes that does mean getting hold of our friends over at the county attorney's office, um, looking at what can be done through the court system if necessary. Right. Right. You know, Michael, we just have a couple minutes left in this segment. Um, do you think that that, that sort of um, support that you just w described, are we, are we needing more of that? Are, are, are there more folks needing our support in the scam arena and that kind of thing? Yeah, there's there's a lot going on out in our in our state, and Montana, you know, is one of those states that uh, has more elderly population, if you will, than many other states out there, and it's only growing. Okay. And with that, you know, those folks of us that are in that sixty and age group and older, especially 70, 80 years old, um, have most of the wealth. And yet at that time, we're also experiencing a lot of different other traumas or emotional issues that are coming on with right. loss of spouse, other family members, connection. And with COVID-19, the isolation, and that's a very right. dangerous situation. And we are seeing increases in those areas and, and we're working with everyone we can to get better resources and better understand what we can do better. Well, Michael, I want to talk more about that since we only have a few seconds uh, left in this segment. We'll wait and uh, do that next segment, but that, that sounds really interesting, and it also sounds very much like folks information that you need to have. You need to know that um, you're not being scammed and you, uh, information is absolutely key. Knowledge is power. We have a few more things to tell you, so please stay with us. I think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least one in ten older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, 
Call your local area agency on aging or adult protective services at 1-844-277-9300. I was the last guy you'd expect to get diabetes. I was a competitive runner and I always took care of myself. So when I was diagnosed, it kind of threw me. But it's really encouraging to know I'm not alone with it. There are a lot of other people going through the same things as I am. It takes some effort. You have to keep after it. Exercise, meds, and diet are the key. But there are a lot of folks who want me to succeed. Diabetes is not the end of the world. With effort and attitude, you can have a normal life. Montanans are independent. We're also responsible, protective, and committed to our families and communities. That's why we've done so well against COVID-19. As we open up, we've got to keep doing what we do best. And it starts with each and every one of us, protecting public health in the 406 for our families, friends, and neighbors. We all have to do our part. Montanans get that. And we've got this. Hi folks, welcome back to Aging Horizons where we're here with Michael Hagenlock today talking about adult protective services. Um, And Michael, when we left, we were just starting to talk about trends you're seeing in Montana these days and that your team is seeing in Montana. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure, you know, when we think about the different trends, people always want to know what's going on, you know, what's the most uh, prevalent uh, issue or problem out there. Um, you know, some of the trends that we have been seeing out there is thinking about Montana and the fact that by 2030, you know, we're going to be up in the top three or four uh, states, if you will, with the oldest population. Right. And in fact, in many of our areas, we're already seeing that exceed this 25% uh, of the population being age 65 and older. And as these things also moved on, we've been looking at what's been going on, is that some of our most predominant victims are actually female um, and those who are over 70 years of age. And so we're seeing those trends, you know, of who the victims potentially could be and the issues that are going on out there. Exploitation, and there's always this talk about exploitation or scams, and they are actually two different things, but they're both on a rise. Uh, obviously with the phones and everything else and internet, people are, the scams are those folks out there we don't even know really. They're just really looking for money and they'll give you all kinds of reasons and excuses why you should click on this link or answer this email or enter into this drawing. And we really suggest people don't do that. Um, if it's too good to be true, stay away from it. Um, there is no quick fix. Um, the exploitation side of things, we're seeing a trend in that where uh, folks are abusing their power of attorneys, if you will. Mm. Uh, a power of attorney and the whole crux behind a power of attorney for financial is that person who is the agent for the person has a fiduciary relationship, which means that all the funds, all the assets, everything must be protected and only used uh, for that particular individual they're being the power of attorney for. And we're seeing people that don't understand that. Wow, that's, and that's a hard one because I bet you have folks that don't want to come forward because they're concerned they're they're going to get someone in trouble or something like that. Yeah, that's, you know, because the other trend that we see in here is that these are not uh, things that are happening because of strangers out there. In almost all of our cases, upwards of 97% of our cases, the person knows who's causing the harm. Yeah. They know who this person is. It's somebody that was a trusted individual. They thought they could. Right. Uh, now, some folks are making choices or decisions not intending to harm someone or cause them uh, undue hardship. But then there's a big group of them that feel they're entitled to these funds, sure. they're entitled to these assets. So it, it's a real emotional time and it's difficult. Right. And of course, when I know who the person is, it's really hard to report that. Right. And we do want people to report to us. Right. And you know, our website is the best place to get to us. And that's at www.aps.mt.gov. Okay. Um, you can go on there 24 seven. Um, You can also call our toll-free number, and that's available Monday through Friday, 
um, except for holidays sure. from eight to five. And we're going to run that on the screen too, so people can yeah. write that down. Um, you know, Michael, one thing that, that just kind of I was thinking about is how are your, you know, because your folks um, usually in your business, you do a lot of home visits. How has that changed uh, with COVID? Yeah, there's uh, some changes there. Uh, we still do home visits. Uh -huh. You know, when this pandemic hit, um, we were already preparing ourselves for a different situation, but it fit perfectly with what's going on now in that we have already made adjustments to the technology like we're using right now to communicate with folks. Right. Um, all of our staff have uh, cell phones. They all have laptops and they're able to access the internet almost anywhere they go. Right. And we still ask our staff, we didn't stop doing our work and we asked them to still, but what we will do is before we enter into the home or engage, we'll follow the CDC re requirements and we're going to ask lots of questions about their health. Have they been in contact? Have they traveled? You know, all those precautions because we want to make sure that everybody's safe. Right. And so exactly. we will do that precursor right up front. Super. Well, now we just have a couple minutes left. We had so much else to talk about, Michael, but <laughs> I do want to just kind of ask you about your folks. How do we get in, how do we get in touch with you if we need you, whether we're a vulnerable person or whether we have a friend or a family member? Absolutely. You know, our website is the best place to make connection with us. Um, as you can imagine, you know, all of our investigators are pretty busy out there. And so getting back to phone calls and such are real difficult. So we really do ask folks if you have questions you need resources or you want to tell us about something that's happened to somebody, please go to our website. And on there, there's a form you can uh, click on to and you can put all the information. From there, we're going to contact you and we'll have that conversation. Um, as I stated before, just a few minutes ago, you know, calling our phone number, uh, we do have a central intake system in there and we'll get to you as quick as we can. Um, but sure. as you all know, getting put on hold or something like that is always frustrating. Well, but you know, I, I mean, I think you guys have a really slick system, watched you work from afar, um, <laughs> obviously, because you do that really good confidential work. So Michael, it's been so great having you here today. Um, um, you've been with us before. I hope you'll be back again. And uh, always a, a great discussion. Thanks so much. Oh, and folks, thank you for having us. Sure. And folks, um, reach out. If, if you're having an issue, if you're feeling vulnerable, reach out. Um, it's all to take care of yourself and to be safe. For Aging Horizons, I'm Kim Yeverman. Thanks for being with us today. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.